Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 8th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Salt Lake City, Utah. Researchers affiliated with the IEEE created an interesting smartphone app that's able to track a user's location without actually needing special privileges. Typically on smartphone, an application has to ask the user for permission to track the location via the built-in GPS. This new methodology does allow an application to do so without any access to the built-in GPS or the built-in Wi-Fi network. Now, what they're doing here is actually quite tricky. First of all, they're looking at the phone's time zone. They're also looking at various sensors that do not require special privileges, like, for example, the accelerometer and the barometer that's typically built into modern phones. In addition to this data, they're then also using the device's IP address as well as its network status, which essentially specifies whether or not it is connected to a Wi-Fi network or a cellular network. Now, taking that data in itself, uh, of course, allows them to narrow down the geographic region the phone is located in. But then in order to get higher accuracy, what they're doing is that they're comparing the data to various geographic databases like OpenStreetMaps, Google Maps, and also things like train sketch schedules and airline schedules in order to further narrow down very particular user may be located. So for example, using these sensors, they're able to identify certain characteristics. If a user is driving, if they're traveling on a train or if they're on a plane or if they're walking and uh, apparently they will be able then to adjust their algorithms accordingly and achieve accuracy that according to the paper rivals GPS. So what this comes down to is an effect that we have seen numerous times in the past when, for example, anonymous data sets were published. If you have enough individual data points that by themselves may not really look all that significant, by combining them and comparing them to other public data, you may be actually able to identify individual users. And apparently a vulnerability in DNS registrar Namecheap's systems allowed unauthorized users to add subdomains to existing domains that they should not have access to. No real explanation so far as to which exact vulnerability allowed this to happen, but the effect was that some domain names had all of a sudden subdomains attached to them that were then used to host spam, which of course affected the main domain that were then also considered unsafe, for example, by Google. The way this originally came to light is by one domain owner receiving an email from Google that their domain was found to be malicious based on content found on one of these unauthorized subdomains. To make things worse, the actual owner of the domain had no way to affect or delete those subdomains. By now, Namecheap has resolved the issue. There are a couple different numbers floating around as to how many users were affected by this. Looks like uh, maybe a couple hundred domains were affected that had these unauthorized subdomains attached to them. And researchers at Kaspersky took a closer look at software used to control many gas stations. Sadly, often the software is exposed to the internet and uh, Kaspersky found a number of severe vulnerabilities in the software, including hard-coded credentials that cannot be changed and are the same across all installations of this software. Now, if an attacker has access to the software, they can turn off the gas pumps. They can also change the gas price. And in some cases, they may be able to actually cause gas to spill and tanks to over. Overflow. Kaspersky found about a thousand gas stations that were accessible from the internet. And Google released its February updates for Android. Nothing really sort of 
out of the ordinary here we got six vulnerabilities being addressed in the media framework that's of course always one of the focus areas for vulnerabilities in addition of course you have patches for specific devices like for example for components from HTC for Nvidia components and then for components from Qualcomm so these particular updates then only apply for specific devices that actually use this type of hardware and Cisco released a couple of updates probably the most significant one at least in my opinion is an update for two DSL routers made by Cisco RV132W and RV134W these routers suffer from a remote code execution vulnerability that can be executed via a malformed HTTP request and do not require any authentication the code execution does happen as the root user. It's not clear if that's because the web server is running as root or because there is an additional privilege escalation component to this particular vulnerability. Well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.